It is important not to mistake a peaceful nature for weakness, for you will find that some of the most docile beasts are actually the ones to look out for. Sometimes the most powerful beasts are not the ones gnarling at the world, or the stealthiest lurkers in the shadows. You will see that protectors of others are usually the ones wielding the most power, as malice is a blade that promptly goes dull, but loyalty is eternal. When it comes to myths and legends about dragons, few are as beloved as the protectors and guardians of the lands and its people. While all species are known to have this kind of relationship, few are as common or protective as the Ironwings. It is within their nature to be guardians, and the people love them all the more for it. There are few bonds in this world, as precious and personal as the bond between a dragon and their rider, and Ironwings are known to bond with humans commonly. In fact, they seek out humans to bond with on many occasions, to the point where some tribes have made it a custom to bond a baby with a hatchling for a lifelong partnership. They are remarkably social creatures, with both their own kind and others. Travelling in large packs, they can be found throughout the entirety of scoured lands, and on a few outskirts where humans can be found, not just because humans bring them with them, but also because they tend to flock to the same lands, cementing their status as protectors even more. They naturally live in vibrant and plant-filled lands, giving them the reputation of being forest dragons of sorts, with some even going as far to live within local tree lines. This resulted in most clades' patterns being derived from local plant life, with a few exceptions, of course. The Ironwings are truly incorporated into Scaldian culture at this point, Places are named after them, most people have some form of connection with them at this point. It's no shock that they have become the symbol of the very kingdom itself. In fact, some Ironwings are beloved to the point of celebrity status in Scaled Lands, but more on that later. They are classed as Wyverns, being that they have one pair of wings, and one pair of large free-toed claws that are on their very large legs. They have free claws on the tips of their wings, and a single spike on their wing joints in order to protect them. Their necks are quite long helping them reach the higher up things without having to fly. The bottom of their jaw has a small cluster of spikes in order to protect it from opponents beneath them, as well as push through certain plant life. They have two large horns on their head that are used more like antlers for social scenarios. They have a small frill that runs all the way from their head to the tip of their even longer tail. At the end of their tail sits a webbed frill of sorts that is used for communication for the most part. Their colours denote their clade, but also tend to match the local plant life as previously mentioned, with some of them changing colour slightly in their later life, such as brighter reds turning to slight purples. This is uncommon though, and most tend to stay the same throughout their life, but given the Ironwing's tendency to interbreed with other clades, they can take on all sorts of unique and beautiful patterns. As most dragon breeding families are aware of, they live in large packs, or flocks, while they travel the scaled lands with other clades often living, travelling, and intermingling together. Some of them moving near and even sometimes into human settlements, where they are accepted for the most part, but as a dragon is still a dragon, some issues are caused by this. I've seen many an angry merchant over the actions of a wild iron wing. <laughs> I can't help but laugh a little whenever things like this happen. Of course, not all iron wings are loving and gentle beasts with some of them being aggressive, apathetic, or even hostile at times. Two that come to mind are both have green colours with different coloured spots on their body now that I think about it. But so long as you treat them with respect and be humble while in their lands, they should leave you alone. There are many stories about Iron Wings saving people for various reasons. Some do it out of the love and compassion they are so famed for. Some because they are bred to be mounts and servants to humanity. Some save humans out of dangerous scenarios that they caused in the first place, to show that the humans are not welcome there. <laughs> this gets misinterpreted a lot, actually, causing more humans to go there. <laughs> but I think at this point, most people have seen more of them in armour than as wild animals, as local law enforcement tends to ride them, as well as the local army and knights of the land, the Windguard, who ride these mighty dragons for obvious reasons, I would hope by now. Actually, them riding dragons is the reason most Skeldian armor smiths make dragon armor more than human armor these days. 
as what's the point of wearing bulky and clunky armor if you're on a dragon for most of the time? And the dragon armor trade is booming because of this, with style almost being more important than practicality. It's no shock that most dragon armor is made to fit iron wings, making those who ride other species have to get customs, or perhaps even reforge it themselves. I should get back to a topic I hinted at earlier, and that is the status of iron wings as celebrities within scout lands. While all iron wings are beloved, even the ones outside of their lands, there are some that are unique and hold special roles themselves within the kingdom, some of them even holding titles themselves. I shall tell you the stories of some of these most famed of the land, starting with the Royal Mount itself. Since the realm's unification, one dragon has served as the mount of the royal family, becoming a symbol for the crown, who is of course, Aelion, the throne's watch. The large crest on his head, and large scales that run all the way to his neck to the back of his tail, which is more spiked than most, and a row of spikes along his wing arms. He is the faithful guardian of the monarchy, and is said to be one of the wisest creatures of the whole continent. But he has not lost sight of his right and wrong. In fact, should a queen become too much of a tyrant as he sees it, he shall, shall I say, end their reign abruptly giving him the moniker of the Golden Stomach for some. There is one who is beloved among the people of the outskirts, and he is Ulmund the Frost Howler. With more and larger horns than most iron wings, and large fish-like fins instead of frills, he is a savior with no equal. It is said that seeing him fly overhead is good luck, and should you see him during the winter solstice, that means you will have a peaceful year. He is charitable and loving by nature, helping all he can in whatever way he can. Many a tale is told where he saves those lost in the wilds, warming them with tender flames and dropping them off at their very doorstep, sometimes leaving them none the wiser. Some even say that if Almond was to die, that the world would plunge into chaos, and integrity will vanish as a concept. And in truth, the world would be a sadder place with his absence. There is one who is seen as the protector of the people. As the legend goes, he is the firstborn child of the god Harvind, and given a holy title to hold. He is Hjalgund, the realm's guard, with a large crown of thorns upon his head, and a spike on his lower chin, as well as a row of spikes along his back. He is a holy figure that has been around since the very start of the nation's history. In fact, some theorize that he is partly responsible for its creation. See, he is the mount of the famous queen Stragita, and may have influenced her in some ways during the very beginning, as he is one of the most famous dragons, who is capable of speech. But he is not the most beloved throughout the land. No, that goes to the underdog of these lands, his younger brother, Fjorgund, the Folksguard. He is slightly deformed, with a forward spike on his chin and two large tusks, and his horns almost resemble a crown, and large spikes and scales are along his body. He is beloved as the accursed underdog of the family, who endlessly challenges his older brother for his titles, and loses time and time again. But the people still love him, and he tries to prove himself more and more because of this, resulting in him becoming a sort of icon for the working class and the downtrodden. I can see why people like him. There is one who is famed by the military, and is seen as the strongest mount for all of the Wingard's forces. I speak, of course, of Ordeus, the Garnet Morn, with a massive set of spikes along his head horns, and spikes and scales around the whole of his body, as well as his spiked tail. He is a champion with little equal. Once, he was the famed mount of the famed commander, Jorlain. Their bond was forged over countless years of warfare together. But after her death by the act of a traitor's arrow, Ordeus was enraged and flew into isolation. He has come out to reveal himself every now and again to those Wingards he views as worthy of his old rider's legacy. And sometimes he helps out alone in campaigns he thinks have a just cause behind them. He's almost a tragic figure. I think that will serve for now. 
No doubt you have heard of all of these famous figures before, and are probably sick to death of them in their stories, so I shan't bore you of them anymore. Perhaps I shall speak of my Iron Wing real quick, should you wish to hear of her. See, I found her when she was young. Not a hatchling per se, but definitely just left the nest, so to speak. She was being attacked by a much larger dragon, and I came to her safety at the last moment. She's been traveling with me ever since, and is one of the few dragons I actually ride. She also loves strawberries. They're her favorite. The Wingard were a bit suspicious of me for keeping her, I might add, as they want to be the only ones to ride such magnificent creatures. But they are free spirits, as all dragons are. Even with their loving and compassionate nature, you cannot control them fully. And there is a difference between taming and domesticating creatures. But I think I should stop there before a loyalist starts to overhear our little conversation. So, I'll leave it at that. I am the Ashspawn. Feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscribe. It would really mean a lot to me. But, till next we meet, fellow traveller, have a good day.